Hello and welcome to Circle Passages and Higher Ground. We're at uh, TC Media Studios in Olympia. As I mentioned, uh, and I'd like to repeat this with uh, each show if uh, possible, is it's just a, an incredible opportunity and hopefully through the support of uh, the community is come on in, the, incredible training. You get a chance to put your own show together and actually at some point you would operate each piece of the equipment that's here. And it's the staff that is really, that's the glue that uh, makes it happen here. Uh, such great guides and so patient, so open and you can never do anything wrong. Uh, they're right there to, to support you. So we'd like to introduce Heather and I'm Buck and we're gonna have uh, a really cool show here. Mm -hmm. And why is that, would you say? <laughs> well, well, take a look. This is I'm gonna <laughs> become more vulnerable and show an inner kind of usually hidden side to art. And I will, I will, put up an image of this, but this, to begin with, is a yellow cedar box. And so mm -hmm. this is part of my dissertation. There's the 350 academic pages. And then I created 165, 22 by 30 inch full watercolor pages. And these are just a couple here that I brought, and I'll show a couple. Mm -hmm. um, but also this beautiful yellow cedar box. Oh, that's um, gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, because my my pages refused to be bound. And so instead of a beautifully bound book, which was how Carl Jung, the psychologist, phrased it, um, creating that, and he had a, his patients create that, he created it as a way to transform through art. And my pages wa wanted none of that, and so Weaving in synchronicity, I was, I was teaching an illuminated manuscript course, and one of the attendees said, well, have you ever thought of creating a box or commissioning a box? Mm -hmm. And because I was saying, you know, I've got all these giant pages, like a giant tarot deck, and they want to reassemble themselves, they have a mind of their own, but I don't know how to hold them. Mm -hmm. And so, I thought, okay, that's a great idea. And with synchronicity, that meaningful coincidence of inner and outer um, kind of life events. I was doing a project at that time that was a collaboration with a fabric artist and a wood, wood artist. And so the wood artist and the probability of this is so beyond remote. So like there's only one modern illuminated manuscript of note and uh, the St. John's Bible. And so how many people had made boxes for illuminated manuscripts on the planet? Maybe mm -hmm. like six? <laughs> I don't know. So this guy, I said, have you ever made a box to hold an illuminated manuscript? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. So the short version is that he and I then worked with the symbolism, yellow cedar from Vancouver Island, mm -hmm. from a fallen old growth tree, this whole process is supposed to be sacred, so you're supposed to hold it as sacred, like our drums, like all of this. Mm -hmm. And so it has a carving on the other side, and so I went through a bunch of iterations. It's a tree, which was the main motif of the art, but um, yeah, it's my illuminated manuscript in its beautiful yellow cedar box. It's beautiful, that's for sure. And you know, you can't see that from back here, but there's a support mm -hmm. uh, in the back. So it's like perfect for... Yeah, I commissioned him. It was his idea. <sighs> a genius, obviously, mm -hmm. this guy. Um, you who are watching can't see, but he, all of it is just with fitted wood. Yeah. You knew what that was called. Yeah, dado. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he designed it and he's like, well, wouldn't it be nice if it could also be a display case? And I'm like, yes, it would. So, yes, so here we go. Yeah, and this first image is actually one that I created 
about halfway through the art. And, um, but it was when I went back and I started communicating in active imagination, what Jung called active imagination with the art. And really quickly, the, my process was to go into meditation and receive a vision. So it's almost mm -hmm. like short version of the vision quest. Mm -hmm. You know, I created a, a habit looking at the water from my house, looking at Mount Rainier, because those are things that are sacred to me. And um, a vision would come. And then I would pretty much leave, go sketch out the vision, and um, then create it. And then at this, this point, I realized that what I was creating was really like a map of the path. Jung called it the path. But it was a path up the tree of life, the Kabbalistic mm -hmm. tree of life, which was that amazing key image that's mm -hmm. so complicated, but is the most um, noteworthy and long-standing art education piece, art transformation piece. So it's like the path of transformation as a soul or as an individual is mapped on that. And so I realized that's what this path is, and the key to it, the way to understand it, because up to that point it had just been like a million stepping stones to I don't know where, because they just reassembled themselves. <laughs> and so then I was like, it's the tarot deck. This is a tarot deck, and so some of those are a different path up this Kabbalistic tree of life, which is a path. And um, so this is the Empress card, and it's the first one that I went back with, and really active imagination is like entering the image and dialoguing with it. And the Empress has all different things you could say about it, but she is the highest feminine aspect on the Kabbalistic tree of life. Um, and she's also kind of the alpha et omega, the beginning and the end, almost where you cycle mm -hmm. back. Um, she is creation and creativity, the creatrix, the feminine creator. Um, she is nature, you can see that kind of mother nature, pomegranates on her dress. And then um, when I entered into the image, which you would think that I would start dial, if it's a dialogue, it'd be like, who else am I going to talk to except for her, right? That's what you would imagine. Mm -hmm. But instead, I just mm -hmm. went right in, past the tree back there, into a cave, back through the cave and out into a field over here to nature spirits. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show, by telling my story, what some of the outcomes are. So the land that we're collaborating with, what happened after this was that a nature spirit came and knelt in front of me. So they literally stopped me. I was on a walk with my sister. Mm. So I literally started seeing nature spirits after I encountered this nature spirit in this um, image. And the other thing that happened, and so we'll just put this down, not to mention bees, as you were saying, mm -hmm. um, the feminine and nature have that capacity to work holistic like a beehive, which is our socially altruistic organism that I think is our potential. But so when I engaged with this, the nature spirit said, you have to go back before you can walk on this path. Keep in mind, I'm like on you know, stepping stone one, and it's my doctoral dissertation, so I've already done three years. <laughs> so I'm like, OK, I must continue on this path. But the nature spirit's like, you've got to go back and heal this core wound with the masculine. And mm -hmm. up until this point, I'd really wanted this to be, which is kind of embodied in this, a feminist Gnostic Bible. I was like, mm -hmm. yay, I'm mm -hmm. making a feminist Gnostic Bible. It kind of encountered distinction or um, imbalance with the more patriarchal aspect of the Bible. Um, I was wrong. That's probably already <laughs> obvious. Um, so this nature spirit's like, you've got to go back and you've got to heal this core wound with the masculine. And so it, it gave me homework. So like after like step one of communing and communicating with the art and having these beings kind of speak through it in a sense, it gives me this homework. And 
So I do what it says, and I end up going back to this experience in what to me is a past life, but was someone in my lifetime. So you could, you know, viewers can believe in past lives or not. So it could just be that it's someone in my lifetime I'm doing this healing with. And it was a lifetime where I was um, killed as a witch. I was an herbalist. But what really frustrated me, and I've had a number of past life experiences that have come up, but this life is the one that I have a lot of anger from. And so it's like I have a lot of unprocessed material from it. My wounding with the hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. Hence my wanting it to be the, about the feminine. And so I left this child, and I had to go back and do this work. And I could see this person who had called for my death. They were a patriarchal figure, a father in the church. And so I went through these different parts of the image of going back to this past life. And so the art is a two-dimensional form of the vision. So it's almost like it takes a time lapse like this, and it collapses it like this. And so it's not sequential. It's holistic. So it's all at once. So it had my core wounding with my heart. So the heart is in the back. Turns into roses in the heart here. It had been a bramble, and I'd, I'd had trouble breathing, too. So I had somatic experiences during this time, like a bramble in my heart. And then it became a mandala, like a little bit Celtic mandala around it. And this hut is where this child that I left was. And I didn't know if he lived or died. And that was where my deep anger came from. And so the long and the short apple tree kind of returning to Eden, all of this different experience in a day, I have this um, homework that I complete, I complete image number two. And I have this experience of um, going back and healing this archetypal ancient masculine and feminine. So it's this ancestral healing. So all of this is working on the unconscious, on the personal and the collective level. So I have this healing that goes back, mother bear here. Um, and I actually had an attack incident protecting my child. So it's like all of these different synchronicities weaving themselves in um, natural time. So I often did them either when my soul, that's how I identify that inner voice. Someone could say their intuition or however they want to conceive of it. They told me when to do things, but I also did them at times like a, a solstice or an equinox or things like that. But always it had, here is this time lapse, this circular sense of going back through time, the circular sense of time. And that's what I was healing and going back. So it was my wounding with the masculine, but it was also the collective wounding of the masculine and the feminine. And, um, and processing death. And what I want to say here is that when I got to this point, um, I'm going to pull up actually this one. When I got to this point, I had an experience of a conjunctio, which is alchemically, it's a union, union of opposites. I'm just going to monopolize time back, sorry. Please. <laughs> but, okay. Union of opposites of the masculine and the feminine. And this is the Kabbalistic tree of life. So this is a glyph of what all of this maps on is a path up this. And what I had as an experience was of this masculine that I was saving and that I saved in this dream. And I had this overwhelming sense um, the day that I created the arts and the dream was right around that time of no anger, no resentments, you know, trend, this transcendent sense of union. And I had all these active imaginations where I had these dialogues almost with God in all things, you know, about the apple and all of these teachings. And so it almost went from Monty Python, like, ah, you know, to then, of course, he watch Heather stumble and fall later in life. But, but I had this peak moment. And um, the trippiest part 
is that the man that is in my life now that I did that work with, um, my interpretation of him in a past life, he and I went on a trip and I've known him for, at that time I'd known him for maybe 28 years or something. And so he kept saying things like, it's as if I've never heard you before. It's as if I've never seen you before. And, and we had this ability to connect. We had always had a lot of difficulty connecting. And um, some scarring issues, who's my most problematic relationship mm -hmm. in this lifetime. So the fascinating thing to me was that doing this homework that he didn't know about had this effect on him. And then he started seeing the same visions I did. You know, so, so to me, the, my um, cliff notes for this talk are that the power of this kind of work is almost hard to calculate because I, we don't even perceive it because it's so underground. You know, other people started seeing the same things we were seeing, so it was collective. It was anchored in the land that we were going to where these nature spirits were coming. You know, it, it was this collective initiation and healing. And so that was the path of this art that was so trippy. And so as much as it's, you know, drums are super powerful, um, dream catchers are super powerful. I've done all kinds of serious work for 20 years. I, my affirmation was to create images of the sacred feminine because the feminine had been so maligned. Um, but this process just blew me away in terms of all of the weaving threads. Those were just the ones I could see, mm -hmm. you know, that were coming together. And the part I'm going to go to next and kind of end on, I think, is that, of course, I started by being self-honest. I wanted it to be a feminist, almost manifesto, right? Mm -hmm. I was wrong. Gong. <laughs> so, of course, I'm wrong. And so this friend that is someone who I also have, another masculine, almost you could say most patriarchal, kind of rule of the father, a little bit alpha male, um, and this relationship that troubles me. So he's looking at the art and he's super intuitively on and he says, all of this is about the lover card of the tarot deck. And it's true. Um, but then it's almost like this voice is speaking through him and then he comes back <laughs> and he's like, but you know, the masculine is you know, this mind is really the better intelligence and blah, 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 blah. And the true card is simply, um, it goes back to Adam and Eve. Adam's the masculine mind looking at the feminine uh, tree of knowledge and Eve who's looking up at Raphael, the angel, who's the healer, um, creator, also the sunrise, which for me is important. But anyway, so he's right. That's like really the whole thing is that the masculine needs to look to the feminine. Mm -hmm. That's part of nature that's looking at God, that there's this is a cycle. It can't just be this, you know. And but then he counters it and he triggers all my complexes, which is, again, I think is what the art, this whole process mm -hmm. is trying to do. And he, you know, does a little bit of the dismissive, you know, the feminine art. Psh, and so then I, he leaves, and even though part of me knows he's right, the lover card is what it's about, I'm like, eh, you know, that's exactly why I want it to be about the feminine. And so then I did a tarot reading, and actually a friend was there, and I probably wouldn't have done a tarot reading otherwise, and she's, she said, had a deck, and she's like, well, pick a card, and it was the lover card, not surprisingly, right? Mm -hmm. This is really obvious where this is going. And I'm like, you know, still not ready. I'm like, mm -mm, you know, okay, whatever. So I pick another card. It's the lover card. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then and then I'm, you know, I get it, but I'm the rebellious child within me is still not happy. Yeah, yeah. And so then the lover card falls out, and I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> you know, like as if it wasn't enough that the first step was I needed to heal with the masculine. Yeah. So then this is kind of an image in a sense of the whole path, even though there are 165 different images and all this text, hundreds of pages of active imagination, 
in which it's mainly a collective teaching. So mm -hmm. a little bit of it's for me, but a lot of it's just the healing of our time that we need. And so this, this is the one I'll end with because it has this, this glyph of the tree of life, these sephra, these circles mm -hmm. up. And it's, of course, the tree of knowledge is where we fall, we die, Adam and Eve are separated, separation from nature, everything goes wrong. The tree of life, which is what this is, is where we return, and it's the union again. And the dream I had had this angel with lightning, and lightning was supposed to have divided the tree of knowledge, and then there's a lightning path mm -hmm. on the tree of life that brings it back together. And then I had this great snake bite me, and they screamed in my face, there is no good and evil. <laughs> and so it felt like this, you know, there is no, like all duality was reconciled. And so that in no way does justice to the, you know, three year process. Mm -hmm. But just, I wanted to testify in a sense that the power of art, because it's how the unconscious speaks to us, and the ancestral and the land-based element, the way to, I think, work through karmic blocks and knots and do he group healing. I mean, it had mm -hmm. so many trippy aspects. The whole thing was like a synchronous moment. And so I just wanted to testify to that um, by showing you some of the images. Certainly have done that. Incredible, <laughs> yeah. 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 And that you were so in tune and listening uh, to, whoa. That was the gift. And what I really wanted, I knew I wanted a doctoral degree mm -hmm. um, because I wanted that womb experience of, you know, dropping deep. And really, the art allowed me to really be present and, you know, just see everything as a living image and everything as a soul communication. and. That's where the deep transformation really took f place, and it was really powerful. It brought those dreams and those visions to life, uh, obviously. And but it was cool where you started and what you wanted this to be about the, the feminine. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it was very humorous because the nature spirit. It was literally like I could tell the next lesson mm -hmm. was in the mm -hmm. forest. Mm -hmm. And it was right there. So I was literally, and you can't block your thoughts. So it's all psychic communication. So you can't be like, you can't like not say something because they can just tell what's in your mm -hmm. head. Yes. <laughs> so I'm like, can't I just get the next lesson? I know it's right there. <laughs> and they're like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Not yet, yeah. <laughs> and I actually, I'm goofy enough that I kind of like that assertive part. I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. let's do it then. But if you never ask. Yes, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was a very frank relationship. You know, I guess any psychic relationship probably is, yeah. I wish Carl was here uh, right now to, for what you've just shared, uh, that would be so interesting. Uh, Jung, that is, of course. Uh, yeah. But wow. Yeah. Yeah, and that we all, you know, to come back to that, the reason I'm communicating this is I'm launching the Soul of Creativity, which has circle passages, some of those um, offerings as well. And it combines myth and story and art and creativity, yoga, nature, all of the core things that humankind has evolved with and through throughout the ages, these archetypal practices. Um, but Jung said everyone has a soul work, a soul's opus, and this was how we transform. And so I think, again, with the drums, the what we've lost is that it's a path of transformation, mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. You know, we somehow got to a place where we thought it was a perfect image behind glass in a f frame that's like a cage. It's not. It's a living image that evolves us. And so that's what I'm so excited about is to help, like Jung did, but um, it's really the soul who guides you, that inner voice, that inner vision, intuition, and that we all have this journey, this path leads within all of us, and we're all artists, like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you know? I was just thinking, oh. that, but we can't all do this right no. here. Oh, <laughs> silly. 
Because it doesn't have to look like this. It can look whatever way it looks for you. And, and so that's the, the beauty of art, right? Because like, <laughs> I'm looking at your beautiful drum. You know, every person, that's my favorite thing about art, every person, it's like your fingerprint, mm. creates in their own way, their own color choice, composition, everything is super unique. Well, I had a lot of help with the art. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm, I'll work with your complex, I know. <laughs> okay, Brene Brown was just talking about that, like 85% of students have a complex from their education, and it's art. And so it's just like, ah, yeah. and art is all about freedom, liberation, transformation. It's like spattering paint, and you know, it's not perfection, but somehow we went on the wrong side road and got to art as perfection, and only certain people are artists, and it's none of it is true. So it's a wonderful, uh challenge, I guess, to uh, yeah. break through, get past that, and uh, let it happen. And let it happen, yeah, yeah. But I don't, well, and, and that's <laughs> that's what's cool. This is very unique to it's you. It's very me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's very me. Um, and I can't wait. To, um, this is going to have to be another few shows here. You still have a lot of paintings that, and, and these aren't all of them. Uh, oh no, <laughs> this is like 20 out of 165, right? And each one is a teaching, so each one has all of this information with it mm -hmm. that was really interesting. And, you know, this, I, I thought I could guess I would end on this. Um, I just got my mammogram where I'm cancer free. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I've been wanting to ask you about that. That'll be another show uh -huh. of, uh, at this point, but that. Thank goodness, wow, Yeah, thank goodness, yeah. But so processing death, you know, COVID. Yeah. So she, it's like a, a Mary figure working with these archetypes, but she has like the Kali necklace of skulls. And obviously Jesus is um, mm -hmm. a skeleton. And so part of it is like to get to life, like to return to our nature to nature, whether that's Eden or whatever myth people pick we've got to process death. Like, to really get close to life, you have to get close to death. You just can't get there another way. And so a lot of the images seem like they were prescient or precursors to processing death. What you've done, too, I think, is uh, you, know, you captured this through your own vision, and it's, it's portraying that. But it, I think what it also does is it allows the rest of us and, and, and others to, so how, where do you see it? How do you feel it mm -hmm. of death? Because it, it's there for each one of us, isn't it? I mean, this is uh, beautiful what you've, uh, how you put this together, how it's come to you, and you've, you've been the conduit to uh, get in on the uh, canvas. Yeah, wow. yeah, and okay. as a last note, part of what I'm remembering, that's what the active verb is to remember. Mm -hmm. So dismembered parts, remembering, putting the pieces together again, which is what art allows you to do, see it all at once. But is to remember how we used to learn. You know, visually, we've talked about that 60,000 times faster. We intake the information, but our visual literacy isn't, isn't at a peak form, especially around ritual art in this sense. Mm -hmm. And so part of what I was doing through all of this is remembering how do you create a composition, how do you communicate information visually? And I'm not, I was learning and I'm still learning the whole way, but part of it is that path of remembering. How do you do this? Something in there is helping you uh, along the way, it sounds like, huh? Yeah. To remember of. To remember, yeah. Yeah, next steps and, and to me it's like just really listening to yourself and kind of let it let it happen you, mm -hmm. you've done that incredibly so yeah yeah thank you ever so much for sharing i can't wait for the next time we meet and mm -hmm. there are a lot of stories a lot of uh, not just even stories but some <laughs> incredible yeah. journeys in here 
Yeah, and about and humanity and earth healing. Like that's where it really felt like it was almost like a curriculum for our age mm -hmm. because it works with the collective. So yes, we'll do a take two or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever, but thank yeah. you ever so much. And oh, thank you, Beck. Definitely for the news that you got oh, today. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yes, made my right. year. Oh, I made can my imagine. Life. Then made. some, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you again for uh, tuning in, and wow. Thank, thank you, Thank you ever so much. Yeah, thank Take you. Take care.